morning and good afternoon guys thank you very much for joining us today on our first webinar audio basics for meeting and conferences let me introduce ourselves myself i am ritendra pudar part of systems application team in sure middle east in africa along with me anish samuel who is also the part of systems application team in sure middle east africa is joining right so as you guys know that uh, we are working from home we are having our home offices nowadays everybody is uh, uh, having work to do from home because of the current situation and it is very important to have a right home setup to do the job day to day business and most of our job is mostly dependent on the conference calls like skype for business blue jeans and link right so it is very important to have the right setup if you know we are mostly um, doing this calls over skype for business blue jeans and link so the communication uh, is the must so in a conference call for example you are running a conference call and uh, audio fails you can't run the meeting you can't do the conference effective communication requires the right sound system and we have done our setup over here so let's let us show you what we have done for this webinar we are using sure mb5 especially me i am using sure mb5 digital condenser microphone connected with usb with my corporate laptop and the laptop is also having the logitech webcam and i'm listening through sure srh145 headphone which is connected to analog 3.5 mm jack my partner anish is also having another sure motive mv51 digital large diaphragm condenser microphone and having the headphone 3.5 mm jack it's also having logitech camera connected with the laptop so why motive why so the microphone what we are using is uh, having plug and play uh, feature you just need to connect quick setup no driver requires to connect with your laptop it's having built in 3.5 mm headphone output so you can straight away connect your headphone with mv5 or mv51 microphone it offers you a smartphone pc or mac compatibility most important it also has built in dsp limiter compressor equalizer to improve the intelligibility your voice pickup right mv5 the one what i am using is having three dsp presets mode vocals flat and instrument so depending on what is your use you can use that specific mode mv55 51 is even better it's having five dsp preset mode speech, singing, flat, acoustic, instrument, and loud. It offers a seamless integration with AV application and soft coding, like Skype, BlueJeans, Teams, et cetera. Right? Talking about the installation, it's having a nice way of installing it for your home office. You can have the flexible mounting option like you see in this slide. MV51 as well is having flexible mounting options. Yeah it's having durable touch front panels so having this kind of microphone for your home office will help a lot to to have the effective communication remember audio is important for any kind of conference call what you do nowadays right in addition to that we also have option for uh, uh, the content creator or someone who wants to have the serious microphone with various options of changing the polar pattern depending on what you need, Sure MB88 plus, yeah. So without further ado, I don't wanna take uh, much time uh, on, on this discussion. Let's talk on the topic. So I'm gonna hand over the floor to my colleague, Anish. He'll take you through a couple of uh, topics and then I'll be back. Thank you. Thank you, Ratan. Uh, good day, everyone. And thank you for joining us today. My name is Anish Samuel, and I represent the Sure Applications team. Today's webinar topic is audio basics for meeting and conference rooms. 
The purpose of this webinar is to give you the experience and knowledge of how to ensure good sound quality in your typical business situations. To bridge the gap between your own technical background and the world of professional audio. It will also help you to adapt to both legacy meeting and conferencing equipment and also it will help you with the latest designs. The agenda of today's uh, uh, webinar is spread across uh, six uh, modules. So uh, the first part is sound systems. What comprises of a sound system, the basic building blocks of a sound system, its purpose and all the other factors. Uh, part two is uh, the microphone. Uh, they, we discuss different form factors of the microphone. Part three is wired or wireless mode of deployment of a microphone based on your uh, use cases. Uh, part four is actually audio networking, which is uh, more or less the trend nowadays. Uh, so we'll be heavily focusing on uh, technologies like Dante that can help you in sending the audio over a regular uh, LAN network. Part five and part six will deal uh, uh, mostly on use cases where, uh, you know, you have like meeting rooms, huddle rooms, uh, you know, large conference rooms, uh, parliaments, and based on uh, the, the venue, you can choose, pick and choose what kind of audio uh, equipment can help you get the desired results. So that is being discussed in part uh, five and six. So moving on to the introductions, uh, your goal, uh, that we focus on here is primarily uh, to provide uh, sound, the best sound quality. So as you may know uh, that since the last uh, uh, 90 years, Chewer has learned a lot about creating good quality sound. And it is our responsibility and also uh, we, we want to help you do the same and uh, uh, we, we want to help you realize the importance of providing sound quality as, as an end customer or a consultant or in, in whichever line of business you are in. So sound quality is not an absolute term. It actually depends on the context. So what comprises of good sound quality will be different for music uh, when you compare it with speech. So in this particular uh, topic or webinar, we are gonna focus on creating great and intelligible uh, sound for speech. So moving on to the next slide. Uh, we are going to discuss the importance of sound quality. The so music, when, when we talk about music, music is all about fidelity. So achieving great uh, sound quality in music requires the accurate reproduction of the entire frequency range of the instruments. So as you may know that in music, there are a uh, different combination of instruments and uh, all these uh, different fundamental and overtone frequency can produce music of great beauty and uh, you know it can it can further be heightened by the reverberations within the room uh, as you may know you know normally uh, you might have seen it in uh, auditoriums or opera houses the speech on the other hand is totally about intelligibility which is which is totally a different animal uh, the goal of intelligibility is the easy understanding of words being spoken uh, while it may seem that it is very easy the fact that interference from unwanted sounds can have a profound effect on our ability to accurately perceive speech. So the uh, great, uh, you know, uh, uh, great sound is is uh, is actually quite uh, tricky to achieve uh, when you have, uh, uh, you know, enemies of great sound uh, present within a room, like a reverberation and reflection, uh, all of that. So uh, in this particular webinar, we'll be focusing on practical techniques that can uh, uh, support in eliminating or you know reducing it to a greater extent. The next slide uh, we are going to discuss about the room. Uh, the room is actually a critical factor in sound system design and performance. So it is actually the type of room, how large it is, how many people are participating, and uh, what they are going to do all determine what is needed in that room in terms of audio intelligibility. So the acoustic characteristics of a room has a significant impact on uh, what approaches we need to do to, to make the microphone or uh, the audio system uh, to be practical. So we also focus on uh, sound reinforcement. Uh, you know, uh, sound re reinforcement is a scenario uh, uh, which is defined to make sound uh, louder 
and delivering it to an audience you know in yeah, say for example if the room is is quite big and uh, uh, the person is speaking from uh, one end and the uh, the person is not uh, the listener is not able to hear at the other end that's when you need uh, something called a sound reinforcement so uh, the, the, this particular webinar is focused on uh, how uh, to identify each room and uh, you know deploy uh, a solution based on uh, that particular room now we move on to the av conferencing uh, slide uh, with av conferencing uh, there are two uh, uh, sections you can say like one group of participants is in one room which is called the near end and the other group is in a room uh, which is at the far end or the remote location so audio uh, in order to for the uh, video, uh, for the conferencing to be uh, you know effective the audio should be highly intelligible for both the rooms like uh, for the near end and the far end so what what you actually hear is is actually controlled by the owner of the other end uh, and as a user or as a uh, you know av technology specialist you will only be able to control the audio that you are going to send out so this particular webinar is designed to give you the information you need to make sure that the room and the audio equipment are complementing each other moving on to room acoustics and uh, intelligibility each room has an acoustic signature the size shape furnishings and physical materials combine to define how sounds behave within that particular space so the more reflective surfaces there are within the room the more lively or reverberant it sounds so the larger the room the longer the acoustic pathways are and it might create uh, more delay and uh, you know more opportunities for intelligibility issues the rooms with a lot of absorptive materials such as carpeted floors and upholstered furnitures will help minimize reflected sounds and it will also aid in preserving intelligibility but you know if the room is heavily covered with glass and other uh, uh, you know reflective surfaces it can it can uh, create intelligibility issues and uh, our our whole uh, aim is to position the microphones and loud speakers in such a way that you know uh, we can maximize the intelligibility and avoid any kinds of unwanted feedback or any other issues with the uh, sound quality moving on uh, we, we are going to discuss about the sound system basic, basics so uh, basically there are three reasons to have a sound system one is sound reinforcement uh, to make the sound louder so that the people who are far away from the talker can hear clearly the second is transmission to send uh, the audio to another location so that listeners can hear it uh, the transmission can be one way like a radio broadcast or two way like a video conferencing the third is recording uh, to capture the audio in a format that can be replayed later or preserved for historical reasons so what is the goal of a sound system so regardless of the purpose a sound system has three goals first to ensure audibility that you can hear me properly second is to provide intelligibility so that you can understand me properly and third is to preserve fidelity so that the sound is not annoying or fatiguing at all and the listener can lock on to what the uh, the person is speaking and uh, you know understand it clearly so what are the elements of a, a sound system so the sound system used for sound reinforcing uh, or av conferencing has the following basic elements the source typically a person speaking into a microphone the microphone that converts the acoustic energy of sound into a electrical audio signal a mixer which combines multiple audio signals together signal processing equipment that improves the audio by eliminating echo reducing noise compensating for level variations you know you can add uh, noise cancellation acoustic echo cancellation uh, feedback uh, suppression in in some dsps uh, you know you can even have parametric eq so all uh, all the uh, uh, the uh, dsp does is is make uh, the audio signal uh, you know uh, be tuned in such a way that it is perfect for that particular scenario the next is uh, amplifiers and loudspeakers that converts the audio signal back to an acoustic energy uh, which can be heard by the listeners so uh, moving on to the next slide what uh, we uh, explained in the last slide it is being uh, pictorially represented here so the a person is uh, talking from a podium 
his microphone uh, his sound is being uh, captured by a microphone which is a transducer it converts audio signal to electrical signal and it sends the audio signal to uh, a mixer so a mixer uh, you know it can be uh, uh, like a hub that connects multiple microphones or you know it can mix the microphone signal with the presentation audio so uh, the mixer then uh, further after further mixing it will send to the audio processor where all the functions like noise cancellation acoustic echo cancellation feedback suppression uh, you know all of that can be in place and uh, fine tune the the quality adjust volume and gain levels and then further send it to the amplifier and uh, you know for the loudspeakers so mostly nowadays you can see that the mixer and the amplifier are are one single unit like the pure uh, p300 uh, mixer so it can it can support you uh, uh, in achieving all the desired functionality uh, for a particular room moving on uh, the next slide is is uh, showing the latest uh, trends in technology so what you see here is basically uh, you know the sure uh, mxa910 microphone uh, which is uh, defined as number 1 and uh, uh, the mxa310 uh, which is number 2 so these are uh, the cutting edge uh, uh, array uh, technology microphones that are implemented you know it uh, the sure mxa910 has close to 100 uh, microphone elements and it can support you uh, uh, support your uh, the, you know meeting room scenarios it can be aimed precisely on uh, you know speaker positions and it can follow the speaker to an extent and uh, all that can be configured using a, a web based uh, you know browser so all the, uh, the the microphone requires is a poe connection from the switch the poe will supply power to the mxa microphones and it will uh, in turn uh, supply the uh, the signal over dante the signal uh, being transmitted of, uh, over dante can be further processed on the uh, dsps like the sure p300 which is illustrated in uh, as numbers 3 and 4 and uh, you know further the signal can be uh, sent to our the far end uh, via video conferencing uh, which is listed as number 7 uh, so and further uh, played to the speakers you know as number 9 so uh, uh, as you can see in number 8 uh, it's a podium which is an additional connectivity so the the sure p300 uh, uh, tone in number 3 can can mix the signal along with the microphone signal from number 1 so the room a uh, uh, is is one scenario what we discussed now room b is exactly the same but uh, the microphone is different uh, what we are looking at is the mxa310 which uh, uh you know pretty much gives you the same functionality and room a and b are connected over video conferencing either over the internet or vpn or so moving on to the next uh, slide uh, the, we are going to discuss the key audio concepts uh, and the terminologies uh, uh, you know it plays an important part in your understanding of sound systems for conferencing so we'll discuss on volume and loudness the inverse square law uh, sound reinforcement voice lift gain feedback gain before feedback direct and indirect uh, uh, you know uh, ambient sound etc so going on to the next slide uh, volume and loudness so the human hearing mechanism is very highly sensitive and covers an extremely wide range of loudness to make calculations easier sound measurements are typically expressed in decibels or db the decibel is the number that represents a ratio of two values of quantity such as voltage or acoustical pressure it is a logarithmic ratio uh, you know it, it is actually uh, sc scaling a very large measurement range down to a much smaller and much more usable range so typically uh, uh, for a human the common range of spl or sound pressure level extends from the threshold of hearing which is like 0 db spl to the threshold of pain which is 120 db spl so constantly being exposed to the threshold of pain or you know more than 120 db spl can be very painful and you can have uh, like hearing damage or permanent uh, hearing damage can happen you know when when uh, constantly exposed to higher levels so our whole uh, aim is to for a, for a sound re a reinforcement system in a meeting room is to uh, simply bring down the low level speech to a normal clear conversational level at all listener positions about 70 db spl 
Moving on to the inverse uh, square law, it's it's actually uh, pretty simple. Uh, the uh, the sound waves that are generated, uh, they are governed by the inverse square law, meaning that uh, by the doubling of the distance, uh, the the sound uh, gets reduced at a level which is which is like six dB from the source. So uh, as you can see in the pictorial representation, there are several microphones placed at strategic locations. Uh, the person sitting, uh, you know, uh, uh, on, on the chair, uh, a microphone is placed like one feet from him, and the second microphone is placed at two feet, which is double of one feet, and uh, then so on and so forth. So every at every doubling distance, uh, a doubling of the distance, you can see that the the audio level drops by six dB. So if the person is effectively his sound signal is captured at uh, 74 dB SPL at, by the first mic. The second mic will only be able to capture it at 68 dB, and so on and so forth. So there is uh, to to reiterate, there is no uh, the a microphone doesn't have what people call as a microphone reach. A microphone only rep, uh, you know simply responds to the sound wave at its location. Moving on to the next slide. Uh, we are going to discuss uh, direct versus indirect ambient sound. So when sound waves leave the source, you know, we are talking about a meeting room scenario. When sound waves leave the source, they spread out in all uh, directions. So direct sound, uh, you know, travels the shortest path. So as you can see in the pictorial representation, a person who is speaking is microphone audio goes directly. Uh, uh, his audio goes directly into the microphone, which is taking the shortest path called the called as the direct sound. While some of his uh, uh, audio waves will will be passing through, or will be bouncing off throughout the uh, reverberant surfaces of the room, which is called as the reflective sound. So again, uh, the, uh, rooms with hard uh, uh, reflective surfaces like glass or concrete will will tend to cause or muddy or you know create hollow sounds that reduces intelligibility and increases listener fatigue so call uh, you know if you, if you, uh, if you have uh, i'm sure you might have made calls in such rooms and uh, we often get complaints that uh, you know the rooms uh, the uh, the person sitting inside the room is uh, as if he's speaking from a box or a barrel you know uh, so that is because of such uh, intelligibility issues so how uh, you know we should as an audio professional we need to make sure that the direct to uh, the reflected sound ratio is very high and the direct sound should be very high and we should see uh, how we can treat the reflected sounds uh, you know how to bring it down moving on to the next slide uh, we are going to discuss about noise the noise is uh, any unwanted sound uh, that is not desired in a in a sound source uh, in a desired sound source is considered as noise like obvious no, sound uh, noise you know no, noise sources are like uh, light fixtures hvac and sounds from coming from outside the meeting room there are uh, some sounds that are coming from the meeting participants as well like typing shuffling of papers buzzing smartphones footsteps etc uh, these are also sources of unwanted sounds uh, while modest level of background noises are acceptable, you know, uh, just to keep the floor uh, alive, but uh, you know, uh, depending on the intended use of the space, excessive noise will degrade speech intelligibility. So, like reflected noise, the ambient noise level, uh, you know, might be relatively consistent throughout the room. Like HVAC can be relatively consistent, but the direct sound from the sound uh, source always decreases with distance. So, that means the microphone, if if it is moved far, far far away from the uh, talker, the ratio of speech to noise decreases, reducing intelligibility. Going on to the next slide. Uh, so uh, we are going to discuss about the gain. The audio gain is is simply uh, the difference between uh, you know it's like the dB uh, difference in dB when the uh, audio system is on versus when the audio system is off. That is when when a, a speaker is uh, is talking through the microphone, uh, how much of a boost is he receiving uh, based on the sound system? And uh, uh, you know when when the sound system is turned off, 
uh, how much is the difference? So that, that's uh, pretty much uh, the explanation for acoustic gain. So how much louder the sound is at the listener position when the sound system is turned on compared to having no sound system at all? Next, uh, we might uh, we move on to the uh, topic called uh, feedback. The feedback is an acoustic phenomenon when uh, a sound is being amplified and recycled back into an audio equipment. As you can uh, see in the in the pictorial representation, your uh, speaker, to, uh, you know, a person uh, talks from a microphone. This audio signal is picked up uh, by the microphone and it is sent to the mixer, further to the amplifier, to the speaker, and again the microphone picks it again, and this goes into a vicious cycle. So what happens is, you know, unwanted this this particular uh, vicious cycle or this unwanted noise keeps keeps on growing until you can hear an unwanted howling or squealing that you know that normally can uh, result in, uh, in in you know uh, um, destroying one of the uh, the audio sources uh, so audio devices so it is always uh, you know useful to bring it down and uh, uh, to to stop it also because uh, to uh, to to save the uh, sound system from being destroyed next uh, we move on to the gain before feedback so the gain before feedback is defined as how loud you can increase the volume of uh, amplifier before causing feedback. So this is exactly uh, what we discussed in the in the uh, in the previous slide. So when there is a microphone gain uh, is is excessively increased, uh, it can uh, raise uh, you know result in feedback. You know it keeps on continuously. So it is our responsibility to aim uh, the microphone far away from the speaker. And the gain levels are adjusted in such a way that they, you know, it will fairly give us an idea uh, when the system can go into a feedback kind of scenario. The next, uh, we move on to the sound reinforcement and voice lift uh, explanation. So a sound reinforcement system is is designed to amplify the sound to a level that compensates for the fact that some listeners, you know within a room cannot hear the talker acoustically at all so this generally uh, speaks about uh, you know a larger rooms where the speaker uh, uh, where the, uh, the talker you know uh, his audio is does not reach the parent listener uh, who is who is uh, within the room itself because of the distance so uh, uh, you know you have to employ a, a sound uh, reinforcement system so that the farthest listener can uh, easily hear on uh, hear and lock on to what the speaker is, is talking about so in, uh, in uh, when we talk about a voice lift system uh, a voice lift system is 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 a, a totally different scenario where you know in some meeting rooms the 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 listeners can listen to each of each and every speaker but you know uh, there might be some difficulty, like some amount of straining uh, the person needs to uh, take, uh, you know, in order to hear uh, what the speaker is, uh, what, what the uh, speaker is, is is trying to convey. So a voice lift system is intended merely to bring the listener closer and restore some of the lost speech level. So the voiceless uh, system provides the minimum amount of acoustic gain that is necessary to deliver intelligibility. So in a properly tuned voiceless system, you can hear the farthest talkers clearly without even realizing that the system is turned on. So again, you know, uh, in, in, in some rooms, uh, there can be a discussion uh, scenario where uh, you can use like uh, a speaker and a microphone hybrid. And, uh, you know, uh, you can have a mix minus scenario where uh, a mix minus scenario is like you are employing a mixer to provide a clean feed of an audio signal minus a particular a microphone that can uh, you know that can create uh, feedback so it is a very strategically placed uh, you know intelligent uh, you know uh, setup uh, which is actually a setup of a mix signals role or a matrixing mixer so mix minus is often used to prevent echoes or feedbacks in broadcast or sound reinforcement So moving on to the uh, the next topic, uh, the microphone. Uh, we are going to discuss about the different form factors of microphones here. So uh, the microphones, uh, the different form factors of the microphones are handheld, body-worn, 
table and overhead uh, microphones. So handled, when it comes to handled microphones, they are the basic workhorses of audio. They can be held in the hand or mounted on a stand. So the handled microphone works well in situations where multiple people, you know, uh, you can pass around the microphone, uh, you know, taking turns and a handle mic on a stand uh, will also be convenient for placement in the in the audience for questions. So normally uh, you can see that handle my uh, vocal microphones are usually equipped with a grill and pop filter, you know, designed to control plosives. The plosives are like, you know, uh, like a popping of, of certain alphabets like P and all. Uh, you can see a, a, a plosive sound. So in order to, to cut that, you know, where the microphone is equipped with a grill and pop filter. Moving on to the next slide, uh, the other form factors are, uh, you know, uh, uh, the most common varieties of body-worn microphones are, are lavalier and head-worn. So the, they are uh, designed to be very small and unobstructive while they're keeping the user's hands free. You know, uh, so the, the, the microphone element is, clo is fairly closer to the speaker and, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, the speaker position, speaker's mouth and, uh, you know, it is fairly even and, uh, you know, uh, level of microphones are usually uh, attached to the clothing and head worn microphones are attached to the uh, one ear or, you know, both ears, depending on the, on the scenario. So uh, a head-worn microphone is more uh, suitable to be used with a, a louder sound system in a larger uh, conference room. The other uh, types of microphones are, are tabletop, uh, you know, microphones that can be directly mounted to a table or podium or attached to a base, you know, that, that makes it uh, fixed. And it, it is, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the meeting scenario is fairly fixed and you cannot uh, change the, move around the microphone, you know, it will help you. Uh, get, get the best uh, gain out of the uh, about this uh, out of the system, and it will uh, there, there will be minimal interference from the uh, room noises. And uh, you have uh, other uh, other microphones called as boundary microphones, which are portable as well, and they are flat in shape, and it will give you a very uh, low visual profile. And uh, you know, you, once you place it uh, on a hard surface, it 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 has an advantage of minimizing problems with reflective sound. The other uh, type of microphones are gooseneck and uh, wireless gooseneck. You know, it brings the microphone element closer to the speaker's mouth, and uh, you know, uh, in scenarios where holes or uh, you know, it cannot mounting structures cannot be built onto a uh, a table, you can use this and uh, utilize uh, for meetings. Uh, then the, you have uh, the hybrids, like uh, the conferencing microphones, which are like a speaker and a microphone hybrid, and it can be used in multi-member discussion or conferencing systems. So they, combi they combine the microphones, live speakers, and controls in a single unit, which delivers good quality sound in a large or acoustically difficult room. You know, where traditional sound reinforcement systems may suffer from coverage or feedback limitations. Moving on, uh, the next uh, type of microphone is overhead microphones, uh, which are di directly mounted above the ceiling. You know, they have a very high directional pickup and it has to be strategically placed uh, in order to avoid, uh, you know, noise and reverberation to, uh, uh, you know, to a minimum. And, uh, you know, it has to be aimed precisely uh, so that the, the, the coverage uh, and the, uh, the accurate capture of the seating area is done. So the uh, moving on to the next slide, uh, uh, the latest trend that you see is array microphones. You know, uh, they combine uh, multiple uh, internal microphone elements, you know, like the Shure MXA910 and MXA310. You know, MXA910 has close to 100 uh, microphone elements. Uh, you can have up to eight uh, channels of uh, steerable coverage. Uh, you know, uh, you can place it. Uh, as you can see on the left side of the picture, there is an MXA910, you know, placed uh, on the ceiling, which is rectangular, and um, you can precisely aim the uh, the lobes to cover the, uh, the speakers. And uh, uh, it is totally managed uh, from, a, from a DSP uh, based, uh, from a software that is built onto the microphone itself. DSP is, is also built onto the microphone itself. It is very intelligent. 
and on the right side you can see the MXA nine uh, MXA three one zero that gives you like up to four channels and you can have different uh, pickup uh, uh, patterns like uh, cardioid, uh, super cardioid, hypercardioid, and then there is uh, like you know uh, special patterns like toroidal uh, pattern that can give you excellent overhead uh, you know uh, noise rejection. So it it goes uh, you know uh, it, it delivers great corporate you know sound with uh, with uh, without any issues in uh, you know covering up um, room aesthetics and all. Moving on to the next uh, uh, slide, the, there are different microphone uh, techniques that uh, that uh, is useful whenever uh, uh, we are using a microphone for during meeting and conferences. The three important ones are, you know, you have to speak in a, uh, in a clear, natural voice. You have to always aim the microphone towards the mouth and away from unwanted noise. Avoid excessive handling of the microphone, drumming on the table, or shuffling of papers near the microphone. So moving on to the next slide. So for every sound system, uh, the the signal is normally transferred via uh, cable. So uh, audio connection can be described by the signal level or the connector type and the wiring scheme. So there are uh, typically three uh, signal levels. One is microphone, line level, and aux level. So mic signals are are ranging uh, in in typical millivolts, and it is it comes it is what come, uh, comes out of a microphone directly. So it is very essential that the microphone is microphone level is being connected to uh, a microphone input, a microphone level input itself. Otherwise, uh, you know, uh, the 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 line level is is typically like uh, you know in the one volt range. So what happens if if you if you connect a microphone signal to a line level input, it might not give you uh, a signal reading. So it is always uh, better to connect a like to like input. Similarly, when you connect a line uh, uh, level to a microphone input, it can create a distortions. Aux level signals are, are uh, typically found on uh, consumer audio equipment. So uh, also there are different kinds of, uh, you know, uh, cabling like a balance cable and balance cable. So balance cable have three con conductors. Uh, that is uh, one of them is the shield and uh, the other two will be carrying a signal. The next is unbalanced, uh, you know, it will be having two conductors. One will be the shield and one will be carrying the signal. So a balanced cable and a balanced connector can give you excellent rejection for electromagnetic interference and unwanted noise hums and all that. So the uh, so, uh, so as you can see in this slide, XLR is normally associated with the balanced connector. And, uh, you know, the quarter inch, 3.5 inch uh, uh, is normally associated with unbalanced. And RCA is 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 normally is fading now from the common usage. The RCA plug was primarily associated with consumer sound equipment. Now it is sometimes used for video, but it is slowly fading. The block connector that you see is is uh, is actually used for RS232 or RS485. So uh, you know it is normally used for terminating cables on the field and uh, you know in scenarios where the cable won't be connected or disconnected. Um, you know, often. So moving on uh, to the next slide, uh, we are going to discuss about the USB connection. Uh, the USB connection uh, or connector provides the, you know, it, it is like an access point for connecting digital audio signals to a PC. Uh, you know, the, it is for a use with a software that can handle recording, editing, or video conferencing like that. So audio is, is uh, you know, uh, nowadays audio is also, uh, being available on USB based connections as well to be used with the soft codec. So RJ45 is a connector that you see, uh, you know, uh, that can be found in most IP applications and the shielded version is used for voice over IP applications. So the connector is becoming the norm in video conferencing where audio is routed over a network. So with this, I hand over the uh, flow to Ritin. So he'll be taking you through the wired or wireless uh, module. Uh, thank you. And if you have any uh, queries, please feel free to get back to us. Thank you very much, Anish. Wow, great information was shared. Hoping that our participants are enjoying this. Okay, so let's move to the next topic. That's wired or wireless. Okay, so starting with wired microphone, 
there is one part of every wired microphone that always seems to be literally a stumbling block. And what is that? The cable, right? So if you see in this slide, there are a couple of microphone units are connected all together, but at least one cable needs to go to the rack room, the, the equipment room where the equipments, all the AV equipments are placed. So if the cable is exposed, it can become an issue for the guy who is gonna use that room. We don't want that, right? But if suppose the table is having the option to have holes, drilling, it's easy to manage the cable, you can hide the cable. And that is the best way of using the wired system, right? So there are several pros and cons of using the wired microphones. So let's talk about this. As we discussed already, if presenter is moving around in front of the screen or whiteboard and cable is exposed, it can cause tripping hazard. Cables take up space on meeting room tables and can get tangled and cause issue as well. If cable get tangled, maybe you will be having the loose connectivity. Cable can become crimped, connector can become loose. So at that point, you are just gonna have unnecessary hum and noise because it's the cable, any kind of loose connectivity creates the issues. So not only the cons, wired microphone can be the lifesaver as well. When say for example, you're in a crowded RF environment and RF band is lacking, then wired microphone becomes a lifesaver. You don't have to search for available frequency. In a crowded environment, the RF spectrum, based environment, you don't need to look on RF frequencies because wired is just point to point. Troubleshooting is much easier in wired microphone. Why? Because if anything goes wrong, you know where is the problem, you can just easily troubleshoot by replacing the cable or the microphone. Now, talking about wireless microphones, wireless systems. So what is the convenience with that? First of all, there is no cables, right? So Wireless microphone is just the microphone with no cable. So the, the audio is gonna be transmitted through the RF, right? It offers you mobility with handheld and body pack microphone. In a meeting room, boardroom and conference room, if the presenter needs to move, walk and talk. So with the help of handheld and body pack, you can easily move and you're always gonna have the audio transmitting to the system right the audio will go directly to the receiver and then you can have it anywhere wherever you need no drilling holes necessary and in a typical meeting room boardroom and conference room when you need to install the microphone you also need to manage uh, if it is wired you need to manage the cable and you have to have holes on table which is not always the favorable solution because interior designer don't want to do that so at that point, it helps. Your microphone is gonna be somewhere in the rack or credenza on top of the credenza. Whenever you are gonna have the meeting, you undock it, put it on table, do your meeting, and then you can put it back to the charging station now, right? Talking about wireless, there are several spectrum available to use the wireless system. Uh, UHF, UHF TV band, that is having the range of 417 megahertz to 900 somewhere. So that is spectrum which we can utilize. We can also have 1.9 gig, which is decked, done uh, digitally enhanced uh, cordless telecommunication based uh, spectrum. We can also utilize Wi Fi 2.4 and 5 gig of a spectrum. Another most important thing for the wireless system is the battery, and it has to have a proper uh, performance. So wireless microphone system offers uh, the battery charging solution and it can also monitor with the system nowadays which are available in the market. Talking about wireless microphone, uh, there are mostly four components which are important. The first one is transmitter. In this slide, you can see there are four different form factors, handheld, body pack, and tabletop. In tabletop, you see boundary, and gooseneck microphone. So the second component is receiver. Receiver is the device which is gonna receive the signal wirelessly uh, through the transmitter uh, using RF spectrum. So uh, 
one thing what you need to understand over here that each transmitter need to have its own individual frequency which will be assigned with the with the receiver it will be paired with the receiver so that plays very important role you have to have separate frequency for utilizing the wireless system now the third component over here is uh, antenna to transmit the rf signal from the transmitter you have to have antenna which will receive the signal from the transmitter and then goes to feed into the receiver and the sound system sound system is basically once the signal is received by the receiver then it's just the matter of what you want to do with that audio that is decided by the sound system right when we talk about rf based wireless microphone system the most important thing what we need to consider is the the frequency radio interference RF is not only utilized by the wireless microphone system, it's also getting utilized by other parties. So it is very important to not to have any kind of interference. Imagine if you have a room which is gonna be used by the CEO of the company, of your company, and he is giving this speech, and if any interference happen, which we don't want, right? It can, it can hamper a lot of, uh, it can create a lot of issues, uh, if it happens right so we don't want that so for how, what we need to understand how to develop the right wireless microphone system so for that you need to understand about the frequency compatibility each wireless system as i already mentioned that each wireless system must operate on unique interference free channel the more system in use the more challenging it becomes having two or three channels are not an issue but when you're talking about multiple channels to work together you have to have a proper frequency coordination right av managers must have a protocol in place using which they can do the proper frequency coordination select the system that minimizes the pot potential interference so nowadays in the market there are many uh, systems which are frequency agile right which gives the possibility to tune to a number of different frequency within their operating range so the system is compatible by themselves to offer you the right frequency to be used this is critical because nearly all legally available spectrum is shared by different types of users and wireless devices the frequency spectrum is also getting used by the mobile operator which are the dominator of uh, dominator of uh, the wireless spectrum so it is very important to find out the right frequency in of in the given environment so the process the process of finding and assigning mutually compatible frequency for all systems in use is called frequency coordination right other important factor what we need to understand is the antenna placement it is very important to have the clear line of sight for the receiver with antenna if you see in this slide the antenna is placed on height uh, avoiding the the audience uh, as you know that uh, human body is having is is made of salt and water which absorbs rf uh, frequencies rf uh, signals so it is very important to place the antenna in a way that it should it should not have any kind of uh, uh, absorption because of uh, the audience sitting in front so having the height helps a lot so please keep it in mind uh, also uh, if you know body pack is always against the antenna because it's always going to be placed behind and it, it creates the absorption because of the human body so in such scenario it is recommended to use the antenna next to the presenter uh, which can offer the line of sight to have the easy reception. Now talking about digital wireless system, most companies uh, are offering digital wireless system nowadays. Uh, initially it was mostly on the analog side. So the benefit of having digital system is basically to offer better sound quality and spectral efficiency. Yeah, talking about the spectral efficiency, Consider if you are having a analog wireless microphone system which can offer 10 to 12 channels in, in a given spectrum, 
you can have almost more than double by using digital system, digital wireless microphone system. Our ULXD and QLXD digital wireless microphone system offer 67 where analog system can only offer up to 12, right? So there is one challenge what you can have with digital wireless system is the latency. But today's digital wireless system are engineered, engineered to minimize the latency issues. Yeah. Now, other thing, remote monitoring and control. Most of the modern wireless microsystem are designed with network. So they are going to have the RJ45 connection to offer the remote monitoring for RF output, audio output, and battery life, which offers con remote control configuration and monitoring right talking about this what you see here is our microflex complete wireless system which also offers remote monitoring with the help of uh, the network connection talking about the rechargeable battery solution uh, we offer the new technology which eliminate the memory effect we use lithium ion battery technology that offers the the accuracy of the battery use so if the system says it's going to run for 10 hours that's going to definitely run for 9 hour 45 minute we also need to consider the environmental effect of using the uh, the standard battery what can happen imagine if you are having a room which is going to be used every day and you are having multiple channels you need to replace the battery every day and imagine it is going to cost you first of all and secondly how much environmental effects are going to happen you are going to throw the battery that can affect the environment so considering all these factors it is always recommended to use the rechargeable battery solution now talking about the next topic that's audio networking we are going to quickly talk about a couple of uh, uh, facts over here we are having a separate audio networking uh, webinar planned uh, upcoming so that's going to give you the intense knowledge of digital and audio uh, networking session over here a couple of slides to make you guys understand what exactly is this so talking about uh, this slide you see there are two schematic one is for analog and second one is for digital uh, when we talk about the audio transmission so the purpose of the audio signal is to reach from the microphone to the speaker in analog system, it needs to go through the mixer or processor, as it was explained before, then audio processing, then the signal goes to amplifier, and then you listen through the speaker. Yeah. But when we talk about the digital audio system, uh, you have to have your microphone feed into the analog to digital converter. These kind of converter will be connected with the router or network. Then you will be having decoder which will convert digital signal to analog again and then you feed in the signal to amplifier and that goes to the speaker so the path is completely different than what you saw in analog system now to give you an example of it, eight channels of audio imagine if you're having analog based system you have to run independent eight analog cable to your mixer or the dsp which is nothing just adding unnecessary stress in your installation. You have to run eight independent cables, then it can have the loose connectivity issues. If the proper termination has not been done, that can affect the quality of the audio. And these cables are expensive as well. So consider all these facts. Now, talking about eight channels of audio in Dante. Dante is uh, the, uh, the most, uh, I would say, favorable networked audio solution as of now, uh, audio protocol, why? Because it offers a lot of flexibility. Now having a look on this slide, you can see it's just the matter of connecting three cable to the network switch and your signal is in to your mixer or DSP. It, it helps a lot in terms of uh, reducing the complexity of the installation, cables are light and inex inexpensive, Get 5 e cable is easily available and your setup is ready. So you can see the benefit of having the digital system um, as of now. Now, talking about Dante, Dante is layer three based uh, network audio protocol. 
it offers you 1024 bi-directional channels of uncompressed audio over ethernet uh, audio quality in 24 bit by 48 kilohertz but you can change that as well with gigabit switch offers you low latency almost near to zero latency and plug and play solution you can use with the the dante based protocol with shared network what does it mean is basically if you are running uh, any other network audio protocol other than layer 3 based protocol you have to have your independent network IT infrastructure to run the audio packets through the network but with the help of layer 3 I'm talking about Dante so you can use the existing IT infrastructure that helps a lot right now to give you an example with our system it's pretty much straightforward if you need eight channels of audio with MXA9 MXA310 tabulary microphone it's just the matter of connecting two cat 5e cable our 310 is going to be powered with PoE connection and one cable, CAT5E network cable to our IntelliMix P300 DSP. And all eight channels are there in, in our IntelliMix P300. Now it's just a matter of connecting the right cable, right uh, connection with software and hardware based conferencing codec. P300 offers you USB connection, so it can go straight away to our, uh, it can straight away go to your software based conferencing codec which is going to run on your PC and hardware codec as well using the analog connection. Now, now the next topic is about the rooms, right? So when we design the audio system, right, you have to first look on the room and decide what exactly the customer is looking for in, to utilize in that room. So there are certain factors which you need to consider when you design the audio solution. The first one is room size, type, what type of room you have. Seating layout plays a very important role. Number of people attending, how many participants are going to be there. Number of speakers, number of presenters, of course. Meeting style, like one-to-one -one or one-to-many, or it's a classroom style. So basically, you need to know what is the meeting style and the format, and what kind of application you need to have in such rooms. For example, sound reinforcement is the need or AV conferencing. That all factors basically you need to consider when you design the site sound system. Talking about huddle room, uh, as you can see in this picture, it's pretty much straightforward. Huddle room is basically the small room that accommodates four to eight people. Uh, you don't need sound and reinforcement for such room. It's small, everybody can hear by themselves right no technology required to to enhance the audio for this sound reinforcement is uh, not required at all the basic need of huddle room is to have the av conferencing if you see in this picture you have the cd screen uh, connected with cisco sx10 and now it's just the matter of sending the right audio signal to the codec with the help of mxa310 which is showing in the picture, it's pretty much straightforward. So the recommended uh, solution for the huddle room and huddle room is to have the boundary microphone. You decide whether you want to have the wired or the wireless, right? Talking about the meeting room, it is, uh, as you can see in the slide, meeting room can accommodate up to the 30 people, six to 30 people. Uh, you may or may not need sound reinforcement for such rooms. Why? Because maybe if the meeting room is large and person from one end cannot hear the other end, then you need to offer the sound reinforcement. Otherwise, standard meeting room is okay to have without sound reinforcement. Key application for meeting room is AV conferencing and sometime recording as well. Um, there are two, when, when we talk about these number of participants, it is very important to have the proper control of the microphone. Otherwise, if a necessary microphone is open, that can add unnecessary ambient noise of the room, which can go to the far end, which is not recommended. So recommendation is to have an auto mixer, which can manage the maximum open channels of the microphone. Uh, we don't recommend to have more than four talkers to speak together. Uh, tabletop microphone are ideal. Uh, when we talk about tabletop microphone, it is ideal to have one microphone shared with one guy, 
But if budget is uh, stopping doing that, then at that point, one microphone can be shared by two. Now, if customer says, no, I don't want to have anything on table, then, then you can look on ceiling array microphone, which is gonna have their own, its own independent lobes, uh, which can be assigned to the seats and without having any technology on the table, you can, uh, it can pick all the voices of the talker that can go to the far end. It offers the uh, very convenient uh, and uh, uh, state forward solution in this case. Talking about boardroom solution, the boardroom, um, boardroom is nothing. It's it's somehow like the meeting room, but this kind of rooms are mostly for the CEO, key people of the company. So you can imagine the kind of acoustic treatment that can happen in this room and the the kind of uh, luxury uh, which can have in this room. So in that case, uh, if the room is acoustically treated it will be having low ambient noise. And if the room is larger, then in that case, it becomes harder to listen the talker from one end to other end. So at that point, we need to think about having the voice lift system, right? The voice lift system is basically to improve the intelligibility in the room to be heard by each participant with the same manner, right? Key application for boardroom as well is AV conferencing and recording. We recommend to have the automatic mixer over here to manage the open number of open uh, channels of the microphone. Other thing, what you, as I already mentioned, that uh, these rooms are having expensive cables and interior designers, and the customer is always hes hesitant to have the holes on those kind of table. So having the wireless solution helps a lot while the stable top microphone is the ideal. But if uh, you have a customer who don't want to have anything on table because they will be having other activity over there. So having ceiling array microphone is uh, ended, right? Now such rooms are always having important discussion and the, the discussion should not leak out. So encryption is always uh, requested by, by the customer for such events, uh, for such kind of room our MXA 910, 310, P300, and Microflex wireless, and all other microphone what we can offer, offers you the encryption. That helps a lot to be specified in such rooms. Talking about training room, classroom, and lecture halls, as you can see in the picture, it's quite some uh, sizable room, big room. Most of the time, you will see that the tables and chairs are adjustable, uh, different layout all the time movable tables to allow variety of seating arrangement, which can make audio cabling a challenge. You cannot think about having the wired solution. The larger and more reverberant the room, the more need there is for a sound reinforcement system. If the room is large, definitely you need to think about ha having the reinforcement system. Acoustic becomes the challenging for such a large room. So it is always recommended to have a reinforcement to have the proper communication or the discussion between the students or the participant who are going to use this room. Now, smaller rooms, if the classrooms are uh, small, then you do not require a sound system, uh, but still need the microphone solution for AV conferencing, a recording, or the presentation, or distance learning classrooms require the, the microphone solution to to have the communication to go to the far end. Now, talking about training room, classroom, lecture room, um, lecturer needs to have the free movement. So preferred solution for the lecturer is body pack, couple of handle microphone, which can be utilized by the student to ask question. But we know that in a classroom, sometime you will end up uh, in a situation where students uh, uh, starts, uh, start asking question without, um, Having the technology, it means what I mean is without having the microphone. And if the distance learning classroom session is going on, yeah, local uh, audience can hear it, but the far end can't. So uh, for such kind of scenario, you can think about having the ceiling array microphone because ceiling microphone is 
always going to pick up to everyone and that's having the intelligibility to activate the right channel if nobody is speaking the gate the the gate of the microphone usually turn turn turns it off so it is always going to activate at the time when somebody speaks so which gives you better flexibility in terms of picking up everyone uh, if the room is noisy and reverberant it is always recommended to have the microphone closer to the participant to the student so we recommend to have the desktop microphone now talking about uh, room reinforcement for the larger room you have to have a proper mix minus setup to avoid the feedback what does it mean is whatever microphone is on the the speakers which are closer to the microphone should not be on and that thing basically can happen with the help of DSP where you do the mix minus uh, configuration. So it is recommended for having um, the proper communication in, in the room for uh, the local discussion. Now talking about the video conferencing uh, rooms, video conferencing, as we already discussed a couple of time, it allows two or more distance location to communicate via audio or video. There are basically two types of codecs nowadays, soft codec and hardware codec. Soft codec is like Skype, BlueJeans, uh, or uh, Microsoft Teams, and hardware like Cisco and Polycom. The recommended solution for that is also like Bodybag, uh, Bondry and Guzenek desktop microphone uh, to maintain the close proximity. But again, if customer doesn't want to have anything on table, ceiling array microphone is the ideal solution. When we talk about the conference call, it is very important to manage the number of open channels. So a DSP which supports auto mixing is recommended. So auto mixer and the second fact, factor what is important to be taken care of is the echo of the room. Echo is nothing just listening your voice back with some latency in a conference call. So how to eliminate the echo of the room uh, in the room? during the call is via AEC block of the DSP. So using integrated DSP like P300 or IMX room can help you to offer these uh, processing feature. So we recommend that to use that, right? Now talking about uh, multiple participant based sound system where you will be having a scenario of one to many or many to many. One to many is pretty much straightforward you'll be having one or two presenter sharing the microphone, handle microphone most of the time or the body pack, and you have the audience just to listen, not to participate. Straightforward system, you can have the PA, you will not end up with uh, having feedback because uh, if, if you have placed the microphone in a proper way, uh, uh, considering the speaker placement. But when we talk about many to many, many to many requires a lot of consideration. When everybody is having microphone to speak, it is very important to have certain rules to maintain the system, right? So for that, you need to have the discussion system. So in this slide, I'm gonna explain you what is the difference between sound reinforcement and discussion. Sound reinforcement is pretty much straightforward. Microphone needs to reach to the speaker and with the help of mixer, processor, and amplifier. But with the discussion system, you get the option of controlling the microphone. So in discussion system, you will be having certain parties, for example, chairman and delegate. So chairman is always going to have the control of the microphone for other parties, other participant like delegates and VIP, whoever is there. So if chairman doesn't want to have the, uh, the microphone uh, for someone, he can turn it off. And somebody wants to speak, he can request and chairman can give the access of the microphone. So that kind of control is possible in discussion system. Talking about seat assignment. Um, Straightforward, uh, if you uh, are in a conference call and uh, you came from somewhere and you need to have your identification. So the moment you turn on the microphone, it's gonna show your details like your name and what is your profile. So those kind of information is possible in the discussion system. You can assign the seat for a specific type of participant. And you can also offer the interpretation in discussions. What does it mean is if the room is having multi, um, uh, let, let me put it in a different way. If, if the room is having a specific language that is not understood by other participant at that point, you can have the interpretation solution with the help of that. Uh, 
interpreter can listen the room and interpret in different language and the participant can utilize the technology of the room to listen the interpreter rather than listening to the floor uh, uh, and the the slide over here is showing our mxc microflex complete discussion system right which offers these kind of feature now let's go a little more in detail about the next level of discussion system over here is the conference system conference system is also going to have the same features like microphone control seat assignment and interpretation at max level uh, what does it mean is many options many channels possibility in interpretation our system can offer up to 31 channels of interpretation in addition to that you can also have the id and ct verification uh, what does it mean is a participant is coming from a specific country and in any having a specific profile you can assign the nfc card for him he comes insert the card in the system and it authenticate the system for himself you can also define roles and privileges Certain different participant can have different roles and different rights of speaking that is possible with the system. These kind of meetings are very structured. So you can have the agenda management. Uh, uh, also document management, each and every activity can be recorded and you can prepare the report based on that. You can do voting. You can see the, the, the entire meeting activity on external display, for example, seeing the voting, seeing the voting result, who is he speaking, what's his profile, what is the room layout, the person who is speaking, where exactly is sitting, all these things can be shown on external display. That falls under conference system. I hope you understood the difference between sound and enforcement discussion and conference system. Now, talk, talking about the participant, uh, we already discussed a little about this, that the participants can have different role in structured meeting. So delegates, delegates are basically those who are there to uh, have their discussion and they are having certain topics to discuss. So these people uh, can join locally or remotely. So delegates are the part of the uh, many to many meetings. Chairperson, chairperson is the, the person who is going to lead the meeting, control the conference and uh, give the access of the microphone to different delegates. Interpreter is to interpret in different languages if uh, the meeting is multilingual. Now, secretary is to do all the administrative job for the chairman. Technician is basically who is managing the meetings, configuring the meeting, preparing the agenda, preparing the chip card, uh, NFC card for authentication of the delegates. And system IT administrator. IT administrator is to manage all the networking related um, uh, issues for many to many meeting part meetings, basically. Now, to show you a typical setup for many to many meeting, if you see this slide, there's, there, are, there are a couple of sections or area where, which is defining all the different types of participant. So see, uh, the section area number one is basically for the chairman, or the VIP or uh, special uh, uh, people, the VIP members of uh, the meeting. Now, then uh, podium is for VIP to have the speech, section area number one. Section uh, number, if you see here, the, the, in the audience side, three rows are uh, having the interpret, uh, sorry, the conference units. So those are the delegates who are having the right to speak. They are having speaker built in. They can listen by themselves and all. And last two rows are for uh, for uh, the audience. So they are just there to listen what's happening in the meeting. Area number two, what you see is for the interpreter. Interpreter is going to have their own separate booth over there. They just uh, um, listen the floor, what listen the discussion of uh, the the event. Uh, and of course, they can uh, interpret in different languages. Area number four and five uh, are basically for uh, for the operator to manage the whole uh, conference, right? Now, to show you the real life um, uh, scenario, scenario uh, this is a picture of one of the conference city council hall where you have the conference unit. Uh, it's exactly same like you saw over here, but in 
in in a real life scenario right so um talking about this i think we are done with uh, with our seminar uh, webinar uh, what we discuss in that let's have a quick recap we we learned about sound system we understood microphone we we learned about wired a wireless system uh, basics of audio networking we saw different types of the room and what exactly you can recommend for those kind of room multiple participant sound system what to consider how does the meeting happens in that that all is discussed hope you guys uh, understood and this webinar was uh, was informative for you guys you can utilize this this knowledge to design the right sound system for your uh, projects and um, and uh, yeah fine thank you very much guys if you have any question feel free to ask yeah we are here to answer all your queries thank you and have a nice day stay tuned for the next webinar which is going to be next week on wednesday again at the same time at 12 pm thank you